church. We'll try that again, yes. Good morning, church. We can do like we do at camp. If you can hear my voice, clap once. Oh, you can. If you can hear my voice, clap two times. Good morning, church. We are going to enjoy the gift of music this morning and sing some songs. If there is a hymn that you have not sung in a while that you're just dying to sing, you can look through and find those. Uh, we'll have time to, as we have two different spots where we're going to do a little bit of hymn singing. And if for some reason we don't get to your favorite hymn today, if you would write it down on a piece of paper and give it to me or put it in the offering plate, um, we'll try to get those worked in over the next coming weeks as well. Today is a day to celebrate music and the way that we um, get to honor God through, the, through our voices and through song. We're going to start with one that we've picked out already. There's within my heart a melody, number 550. This one I think you'll find the words up here as well, but you can also look in your hymnal. Uh, we'll sing the first three verses. Pray with me. Holy God, thank you for the melodies that you put in our lives and the way that we can sing to make it through the day, the ways that we can sing to praise your name, the way the music fills our hearts and souls and gives us cause to rejoice and be glad. Bless us in this, this time of worship that we might be called together as your people, that we might express our praise through song and hear your word for us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, officially, and welcome to worship at First Christian Church. We're delighted that you are here. Today is a good day to be in worship as we sing songs and hear a word from Scripture and have an opportunity to gather at the table and feast together. I want to invite you to find the attendance card that's located in the pew rack in front of you. If you don't mind to take a moment to fill out the information requested there, you can place that in the basket as you come forward later for communion. There are some announcements that are printed on the insert. You can read those. They were projected on the screen as well. I do want to highlight just a couple things to invite your continued prayer for our Cuba mission team, who I believe will be returning um, later today. Uh, so prayers for them. You'll see their names printed under, at the bottom of the prayer concerns there. Also, I received word last night that um, Charlene Reese was taken to the emergency room out in um, Colorado. So 
also invite prayers for her as um, she's dealing with a little altitude sickness and some other symptoms as well. At this time, I want to invite the kids among us to come up for the children's moment. Good morning, friends. I have a question for you all. Do you like to sing? Do you like to sing? Do you like to sing? Do you have a favorite song? What's your favorite song? Are you shy to tell me? Burn Like a Star. We did that at JYF camp just a couple weeks ago, and that kind of got stuck in our heads, and we had motions and all of that. That was fun, wasn't it? Who has another favorite song? Do you have a favorite song? Oh, sorry. What? Burn Like a Star. Have you listened to that one, too? Did they teach you the motions? How cool is that? Do you, have, do, do you have a song that you like to sing all the time? Yes. Yeah? Do you want to tell me what it is? Do you want to whisper it to me? No. Okay, you want to keep it, keep it special. Well, we have a song. Um, my friend Julie was here earlier, too, and I asked her if she had a favorite song. And one of the songs that she thought of was All in All. It's one that the youth sang um, a couple months ago, right? And sometimes we sing this one at camp. Oh, and I have some copies. Do you want to look at this? And we can try to sing this together. If you want to pass those. We're just going to sing the first verse. Maybe we can even teach it um, to the adults, too. But this one, it says, You are my strength when I am weak. Can you all say that? You are my strength when I am weak. I'm going to get the grown-ups to repeat this. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. My all in all. And then seeking you as a precious jewel. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. You are my... Okay, now here's the easy part. The chorus just goes, Jesus, Lamb of God. Jesus... Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. And then you repeat that. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Miss March is going to help play and help lead the singing on this. Um, will you all try to sing this together? We're going to sing that verse, the you are my strength when I am weak, and the seeking you as a precious jewel. And then we'll sing that if you can remember nothing else. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name.
to hear these words from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Thank you all for coming. and greet one another. You want him to turn it on? What to? Chris. Can you turn her mic on? Okay. Hey, can you turn this mic on? Are they in a stupor? Yeah. Turn the volume. That's it. Good. Better. <laughs> Good to see you this morning. I asked him up today. I see already have hymnals out and ready to pick the next song perhaps we're gonna sing three songs right now I think we'll sing like just a couple verses of each one so I'm coming down to find who has a song all right who's gonna pull out their hymnal and start rapidly looking for their favorite got a request now we're looking this is your chance all things bright and beautiful let's see if we can find that one Things bright. Did someone call up the number for them? 61, number 61. Hold on to that one. 61. Is that the right one? All things bright and be beautiful. Okay, and it starts with a chorus. So we'll sing the chorus and then the first verse and the chorus and the um, last verse, third verse, okay? Marta. <laughs>
we have another request. 517, 517. It's like a surprise waiting to be opened. Love divine, all loves excelling. Let's sing the first and fourth verses of this one. Number 517. Five seventeen. Five seventeen. Love divine, all loves excelling. How many verses? We'll sing two verses. The first and the last. One. Number 56. For the beauty of the earth. Let's sing the first and last verses of this one. Number verses 1 and 5. So I'm going to let you keep searching. We'll do, we'll do a few more after the message, okay? So find your hymn, mark your spot, um, and we'll come back. Okay, we want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and uh, we want to be sure to be praying for those people who are listed in your bulletin, also for our Cuba mission team, and then just a note about Charlene. Okay, also for Charlene Reese. We lift up prayers. And we want to continue praying for our search team. Amen? As they continue with the search process. Did you know that Jennifer was on TV this morning? Some people said they saw her. How many saw her? Oh, wow. You're a star. 
All right. Okay. We want to continue our prayers for our country, for our world, for our town, and uh, for those who are in leadership. Amen? And so let's take a few moments and go to Lord in prayer. Pray- prayer is important because God commands us that when we have cares, that we should cast them upon him because he cares for us. We don't need to walk around burdened by these cares. We can give them to God, and we can be assured that God hears our prayers and answers them. Amen. So let's take a few moments and pray together, and then I'll lead us in prayer. Amen. Lord, we pray this morning that you would accept our thanks and praise for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the splendor of our created world and for the beauty that it contains and for the wonderful life and the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care that surrounds us on every side. We thank you, O Lord, for setting us a task that demand our our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments that satisfy and delight us. But above all, Lord God, we thank you this morning for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we arise to life as well into your glorious kingdom. We pray this morning that you would grant us the gift of your spirit, that we might know him, and then in turn make him known, and that through him at all times and in all places we may give thanks to you in all things. Hear now as we lift up our voices together in that prayer which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive our debtors, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So this morning we're going to be looking into the gospel according to Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse 30. And it reads this way, it says, The the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. You see, this is following a portion that we didn't cover in Mark, in which Jesus sent out his disciples. He gave them power to uh, do ministry, and they went out and they did that ministry, and they came back and gave them a report about everything that had happened. And it was really a a great ministry that they performed. Now they're back with Jesus. They're gathered around him, and they're telling him everything. And then he said to them in verse 31, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And as they went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, 
this is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that we, they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he, Jesus, answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. And then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to disciples and to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all and all ate and were filled. And when they took up the tw- and then he took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish, and those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. Wow. Pretty familiar story though, isn't it? We all we've all heard about the feeding of the five thousand. But we're gonna look at it a little bit differently here in a minute. But first I want to tell you this joke. You all ready for the joke? Are you awake this morning? Okay. I hope all that singing didn't just, you know, sap all the energy out of you, you know. You need a little bit to get through this part, too. We'll be back to the singing in a minute. But first, I want to tell you about this. This is a, a farmer in Ireland. His name is Muldoon, and he had this sheepdog that they really, really loved. But the dog died, and he came to the priest of the town, and he, sa- he said, Father, you know, my dog has died would you mind saying a mass for my dog? The priest got indignant and said, you know that we don't say masses for dogs in the church? And the man hung his head down. He said, you know, I really love that dog. He said, I I really wish you would say a mass. And the priest got indignant and said, no, we don't do that. Why don't you go down the road to that new church? Who knows what they believe? Maybe they'll do it. And so Muldoon said, well, okay, he said, but Father, one more question. The priest said, what's that? He said, do you think $50,000 is enough for that kind of service? The priest looked at him and said, well, why did you tell me he was a Catholic dog? <laughs> so we're back to this story about the feeding of the 5,000. There's some peculiarities about this story that, I, that really strike me. I, I think they're put in there to kind of get our attention. First of all, you know, I just said that Jesus had sent out the 12, and they came back, and they had this glorious report of how, you know, they had this ministry, people were getting healed, uh, people were uh, getting saved, demons were being cast out, just a great evangelistic report. And wouldn't that be nice to see some people getting saved and some people getting healed? Wouldn't we love that right here, right now? It would be a good time. And so you imagine how excited they were. And Jesus uh, says to them, you know, you guys did a good job. Let's go away for a little bit by ourselves and have some R&R. You remember R&R? When I was in the Army, we went on R&R, rest and recuperation. Because, you know, like the Army, ministry can be tough. It can be tough. It's overwhelming. The people keep coming and they have needs and they want their needs met and it seems like it never ends and sometimes we get overwhelmed in the church don't we people come to us consistently wanting help with all their problems and and we seem like what who are we and look we're just a small church and how can we handle all that and it just keeps coming and coming and you know if you're in a position uh, in the church where you, you know, you're called upon to meet some of these needs, it's very, very overwhelming. Every once in a while, you need a break. Amen. You just do. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Let's go by ourselves. Let's get away. Let's go to a deserted place. Let's go to a place where there is nobody. We can rest. We can we can you know, rejuvenate ourselves. And so they get in a boat and they start across the lake. You know, in Mark's gospel, that boat goes back 
and forth, back and forth. That boat is a character all in and of itself. But they're in the boat, they're making their way, and the people see that they're going across the lake, and they start passing the word, and they start running around the lake, and they actually get there before the boat does. Can you imagine? Now that, I think, is funny. And I think that's meant to catch our attention. Something else is going on here. So that when they get there in the boat, they really don't have time for R&R. But Jesus looks on them and has compassion for them. Compassion. He doesn't become exasperated and say, why why don't y'all leave us alone for a while? But he has compassion. And why? Because he says they were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd. You know, when I look out at our world today, I see people who are like sheep without a shepherd. Get that image in your mind. What would sheep without a shepherd look like? Sheep that's scattered all over the place, trying to fend for themselves. The wolves come in and devour them. They don't know where to go for the still waters. They don't know where to go for the green pastures because that takes the good shepherd. You know the shepherd psalm, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. These sheep are without a shepherd and they have want. And they have great need and that's why they're there. They're desperate. You know, there's something about that desperation that brings people to the cross of Jesus Christ because that's the only place they can get the help that they need. But these people, Jesus said, were like sheep without a shepherd. And so he had compassion on them. And how did he express that compassion? He taught them. That's what it says right here. He taught them. Don't you find that interesting? He didn't have a healing line. He didn't have a a prayer meeting. He taught them. And I find that very amusing, being a pastor. Because while you all show up on Sunday morning, because we're going to see our friends, because we're going to sing some songs, and because we're going to hear a sermon, but when I call for a Bible study, the crowd gets small really quick. You ever notice that? Don't look at your neighbor. (laughs) so teaching them that's what he was doing he was teaching them and there they were and the hour was getting late they were still there listening to what he had to say because he had something to say that was touching their soul touching their spirit helping them to overcome the desperation that they felt inside that desperation that motivated them to race around the lake and get there ahead of them. That desperation was being met in the teaching of Jesus Christ. There's something about having this teaching. Think about that. You know, fewer and fewer people are coming to church. And that's a fact, amen? So where are they learning about God? TV? Radio, books, where are they learning about God? And, and that's probably why they're like sheep without a shepherd. You, would, you talk to people and they all have a theology. Every one of them has got some kind of theology worked out in their own mind in which things are going to be okay for them. But is that really who God is? That, that God that they've conjured up with inside themselves. Where did they get these notions back up? Did you know I learned something in seminary? One thing, anyway. And that is that most adult emotional problems stem from a distorted image of God. And that's true. You can look it up. That's where it comes from. 
people have these wild notions about who God is and, and, and it causes them such distress that it, it, it manifests itself in some weird behaviors. People get depressed because they feel like there's no hope. There is no God. They're like sheep without a shepherd. They're filled with despair. I believe that's what's going on throughout our world today. I think it's always been going on. That's what Jesus was saying when he was there that day in that deserted place. People who were sheep without a shepherd. And so he had compassion on them. And so he taught them, but the hour was getting late. And his disciples, you know, were looking around and saying, hey, you know, it's getting late and McDonald's is closed. In fact, there were no McDonald's or Burger King or any other fast food place. There were no stores. There wasn't any Walmart or, or Sam's Club or any store around there. They have to send them away so that they can go and get something to eat. And Jesus looked at them and said, no, you feed them. And they thought he was talking about material food, physical food. And they were remarked and said, what are we supposed to do, spend 200 denarii on buying bread for these people? You think about a denarii, a denarii was the equivalent of one day's work wage. 200 would be over a half a year's worth of wages. That'd be a lot of bread, don't you think? And that's what they were remarking. They were, they were saying, what, you know, why are you telling us this? This is like an impossible task. But listen, does, do, you th do you think that Jesus would ask us to do something that is impossible? We act like that in the church half the time, don't we? We do. We know what we're supposed to be doing, but somehow or another we convince ourselves that it's impossible. We, we don't have enough money. We don't have enough resources. We don't have enough people. We don't have this and we don't have that. And so it becomes an impossible task. But again, I ask you, do you think that Jesus would ask you to do anything that's impossible? Maybe he might ask you to do something you think is impossible. But with him, all things are possible. Possible. So he asked him, well, what do you have? How many loaves do you have? Five. Go find out. Five, they came back with the report. Five loaves, two fish. And so then he commanded them, the people, to sit in groups, to sit in groups of 50. And what that means to me is, is that Jesus was making some order out of the chaos that was in front of him. And isn't that what church is all about anyway? Bringing order to our lives? Taking the chaos out of our lives? Giving us some structure, some order? Sitting together in church, we begin doing things a little differently because we're sitting in the presence of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Waiting for him to feed us. Maybe, maybe not physical bread, but certainly bread from heaven. Certainly the word of God. Certainly that spiritual nourishment that we all need. And then Mark tells us that Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and they handed it out. Doesn't that sound like communion to you? It ought to. We do it every week. Jesus had compassion he brought order out of chaos by giving a commandment. And now we're having communion together. And I think this story is there just to remind us of who we are and who he is for us. Amen. That the chaos that you feel in your life needs some order, some structure, and so we have to give ourselves to the commandments that he gave us. We have to assemble ourselves together in companies so that we can support one another and so that, that the load doesn't become impossible for us and so that we can understand 
that, that Jesus is bringing order to the chaos in our lives, and then we need to commune with him. Amen. And when we do, our needs are not only met, but we're given an abundance. Out of those five loaves and two fish, 12 full baskets, after everybody ate to their fill, 12 full baskets of leftovers. Amen. Talks about the abundance we receive when we come to Christ and allow him to bring order into our lives. Amen. You have that opportunity this morning by opening your heart and letting him become the good shepherd to you. Let's pray. And Lord God, we do thank you for this word today. Help us to open ourselves to you. Come into our lives and bring order. Remove the chaos. Take away our, our depression and our disparaging and, and bring us the abundance that only you can give. And we'll give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' holy and precious name, Amen. Amen. We're going to sing some more, and I think there was a request over here, and I see Cal has one too. Pat? Number 99. This is a way of finding out if somebody else's favorite is your favorite too. Oh, how I love Jesus. Let's sing verse 1 and verse 3 of number 99. Number 92, just back a few pages. All hail the power of Jesus' name. We'll do verse 1 and 4 of this one. Number 92.
one to me. <laughs> I did, any, new to anyone else? Yeah, new. Okay, um, Patty. 618. How firm a foundation. Let's do verses 1 and mix it up. We'll do verse 2. 1 and 2. Number 618. Four fifty-two. Wait, I think this one might be one of my favorites too. Four fifty-two. Here I am, Lord. This one's longer. We'll just sing the first verse of this one, number four fifty-two. sound good and I would like to keep on singing but we're gonna move toward the table if you didn't get your song sung today would you write that down so that we can have that and we'll try to sing that over the next few weeks or come and find me in the fellowship hall and I'll do a sing along with you because I could sing all day so I do Marta can we do one verse of number 422 as we head to the table and I'll invite those who are helping to serve this morning to join me there number 422 the first verse let us talents and tongues employ.
I love that hymn. It's a little bouncy. It almost makes you want to dance around a little bit. And I love the words, especially in light of this morning's scripture, just reminding us that Jesus is alive and we celebrate that at this table, that earth can breathe again and we can pass the word around that loaves abound. There's enough for everyone. We gather at this table to remember and to celebrate the one who takes bread and blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to us and all the world. This is his body given for you. Enough for everyone. We remember the Christ who took the cup and blessed it and gave it to his disciples and gives it to us, saying, take and drink. This is a new covenant poured out in his blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we share this meal together, as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to come together as the family of Christ and raise our voices in joyful celebration for the gift that you've given us, the gift of your son and through his broken body and spilled blood that if we believe we're saved so dear lord let us leave here with this just joyful celebration in our heart because we know that our community our country and our world need to hear this message and they need to see this in us we serve a risen savior thank you in jesus name we pray amen This is an open communion table. All are invited to share in this meal. I invite you to come forward and to tear off a piece of bread and to dip it in the cup, or to take one of the wafers and one of the individual cups and participate in that way. If you're unable to come forward, we're happy to serve you in your seat. And as you have gifts, tithes, and offerings, as you have the gift of your attendance, you can come and bring those in the basket as well. These are the gifts of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God.
10 years to make up their mind. There's some of you still sitting out there that can make that same decision and you're invited to come as we sing today and you too can become a member of our church or if you want me to pray with you, you're welcome to come as well. God is here. God loves you. Don't go away without getting what you need from him today. Amen? Please stand with me as we sing. Now may God, whose love never lets us go, save and keep and preserve you this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.